from the first episode onward, all the way to the end of the eighth episode, which is a grueling 40 plus minutes. <laughs> Each episode has copious amounts of dull exposition, uh, a, a gratuitous and unnecessary sex scene that adds nothing to the story, cringe dialogue, like self-serious cringe dialogue that becomes just so unintentionally funny, and, 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 a, and a random slow motion action scene. Although, th th that's kind of more every other episode. He doesn't always use slow motion, but when he does, it's very noticeable. But sometimes, the slow motion action scene, it's, it's replaced by like a choppy animated action scene. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and move on to my review to Twilight of the Gods. So, Zack Snyder is a hack. I don't know if you didn't know that. I think I've made my feelings on Snyder's recent filmography over these last few years pretty clear, quick, crystal clear even. You know, whether it be Batman v Superman, colon, heavy emphasis on that, colon, guys, Donna Justice, or really any of his DC stuff, his Army of the Dead movie, uh, its direct sequel and franchise is canceled, by the way. Uh, and the Rebel Moon franchise, which has died spectacularly with no one caring about the supposedly better director's cuts that are actually, like, they make the movies worse, you know? Um, it's just, it, it, those movies are just fucking wretched. Um, the, the man has become infamous for his arrogance, his ignorance, his comical lack of self-awareness and his sycophantic and cultish fan base who harass and demonize or threaten anyone who dare criticize any of Zack Snyder's films or projects. Well, Snyder and his uh, typical cohorts uh, have delivered more slop with his newest series, an animated series called Twilight of the Gods. Now, I'll tell you right now, I love dark fantasy, uh, especially 80s dark fantasy with movies like Conan the Barbarian and even its various knockoffs, uh, movies like The NeverEnding Story, you know, or even Dark Crystal, right? And it's like, yeah, we made these for kids, but we're going to put in some really hard stuff that's going to traumatize them. I love that stuff. I eat that up, you know. I, I also love Norse history and mythology and its aesthetics and, like, you know, Viking, Viking culture. You know, and I've recently actually been reading uh, a great book that combines all those things into an epic tale of, of vengeance and fantasy and, and darkness. It's, it's funny enough, it's actually called The Shadow of the Gods. So with all that in mind, Something like Twilight of the Gods would most definitely appeal to me, right? You know, well, on paper, it most certainly does. Heavily inspired by Norse mythology, you know, a culture and fantasy, an adult animated series that follows a, a Norse, you know, warrior. In this case, her name is Sigrid, who is joined by a group with various skills and abilities to, you know, take down the mighty Thor for murdering her, her family, right? Uh, that, that sounds like something that I want to watch. And you guys know I, I love adult animation. I, I, wish, I wish the West had the same mindset that the East does. Japan and South Korea and many other Southeast Asian countries that make animated films and TV shows where it's like they view animation as it's not just for children. It's just, it's just a medium to tell different stories, right? That's what it, it can be for adults. It can be for children. It can be for everybody. I love that mindset. And I feel like we've been getting a lot of that stuff over, over uh, like recent years. And, it's, and, and that's been wonderful. Um, but the problem is, <laughs> and it's the central problem with a lot of these things, is that it's coming from Zack Snyder <laughs> and, and his collaborators who struggle when it comes to telling a coherent story with well-developed characters, interesting characters. Instead, this show, it just indulges in all the things that Zack Snyder has become infamous for for well over a decade. From the first episode onward, all the way to the end of the eighth episode, which is a grueling 40-plus minutes. <laughs> Each episode has copious amounts of dull exposition, uh, a, a gratuitous 
an unnecessary sex scene that adds nothing to the story, cringe dialogue, like self-serious cringe dialogue that becomes just so unintentionally funny, and, 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 a, and a random slow motion action scene. Although, th th that's kind of more every other episode. He doesn't always use slow motion, but when he does, it's very noticeable. But sometimes, the slow motion action scene, it's, it's replaced by like a choppy animated action scene. And so, you know, and so, so much of it just doesn't work. And he, and he does this thing, which I don't understand why he does this. S there is so much telling and not enough showing in this series. And then just repeat. That, that's what it is. Every single episode. It's animated Rebel Moon. It's, it's, it's Rebel Moon with a Norse aesthetic layered on top. Like there are scenes, like talking about the, the showing not telling of it all. Or excuse me, the telling not showing. Um, there are so many scenes of people who we never really learn anything about them. They, they do, like, recruit most of the characters, like, in one episode. So it's like, all right, right. People just are just talking around a fire pit, talking about their backstory or, or a legend or a myth or, or whatever, and us not actually seeing it. Just show us what you're talking about. <laughs> just, just show. Why are you just focusing on the character just staring in the fire or looking at or looking at the side and just maybe occasionally doing different cuts? Just show us what you're actually talking about. Just like, all right, he's going to start telling it and then we're going to like fade. There's going to be a wipe. There's going to be a transition. There's going to be a fade to black, fade to white, fade to something. Nope. Nope, it's just we're going to look at this character talking about this thing and us not being shown. And it's like he keeps doing it. And I don't, I, why? What's the, what's the excuse? What's the excuse? It's so weird. He just, he just loves this. He just loves exposition for the, for the sake of it. I think he's just kind of fascinated by the idea of the, of the person, you know, surrounded by fire and everyone's looking captivated as they tell this story. Maybe he was like really into campfire tales as a kid. Maybe he just fucking loved like the beginning of, of, uh, of, you know, uh, of that Nickelodeon show, uh, oh, I forgot what the, the, the hell the name of it is, but um, Are You Afraid of the Dark? That's what it's called. Are You Afraid of the Dark? And he loved the beginning of it, and he hated the rest of the episode when they started showing stuff, but he loved the ending when they, when they come back. Like, that was his thing. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's so frustrating because it happens every single episode. And just these characters, like you actually have like, a good, a good cast in here. At least some people like you got Peter Stormare, Peter Por Peter Stormare, you know, who has had a long history of of voicing anime characters spectacularly in things like Castlevania, for instance. You have him as this crazy berserker in in the show, and they don't do anything with him. <laughs> he occasionally says something like, "Is that Peter Stormare?" I can't tell because he has so few lines, and when he does speak, it's like kind of inconsequential to everything. Corey Stoll's in it. John Noble voices Odin. They do fuck all with Odin. I'll talk about Odin in just a bit. Um, you have uh, you, you have our, your main character, uh, uh, Sigrid, you know, and she's pretty much, uh, you know, uh, Butella, Sophia Butella from Rebel Moon. She's just this generic badass who's really good at being a warrior, and uh, that's it. You learn about like her history in the in the first episode, and that gets you know things going. I got going. And it's just it's just the same story. Like I'm fucking mad that everyone that I like died, or some people that I like died, even though he didn't seem to like really care about them to begin with. But whatever. Um, I got to recruit a team of people. I got to recruit a team of people who join me, and then every single one of them. To just, they just like, yeah, all right, I'll join you. Like, there's no, like, you know what? Hey, before I do that, I got to see if you're actually, you know, up to snuff. I got to actually find out if, if you're worthy of me, you know? Uh, it's just it's just a, yeah, sure. I'm, I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> I guess I'll just join you. Or maybe there'll be, like, a crazy action scene where they fight the person. They'll be like, you have proven worthy to me. Uh, you are a worthy champion, and therefore your cause is worthy, so therefore I will join you. It's like, okay. If you say so. If you say so, and that and that's what they do, and, that, and they, all these characters join, and they have no chemistry with, with each other whatsoever. They just and they just go to certain places just because the plot necessitates them to go to those certain places. Like at one point, they need to get uh, cursed weapons. They need to get cursed weapons from the dwarves because that's what you need to kill a god, right? And and you know you have this one character, her uh, her uh, would be husband, her fiance, who's and he's pretty much like what's his name useless guy from Rebel Moon, because he's useless in this too. His name is Leaf. He's like this uh, human king. 
And uh, he's kind of like always doubting her and like, I don't know about this. I'm not sure about this. And he's like asking like, why, why do we got to get these weapons? And they say, because it must be done. <laughs> And he's like, all right, good enough for me. I'm like, I don't know. I could have, I would have, I, I, I think a better explanation could have been like good. Maybe going to get a backstory. Like we can cut away to an animate sequence about these. Nah, don't worry. Baby. Because it must be done. Because Zack Snyder demands it must be done. So we can get to a point A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the way down to Z. All right. That's what we got to do. And they just waste all these. They waste all these characters. The sex scenes in this. There's a lot. There's, there's it's pretty much a sex scene every episode. And they're just weird. And they're gross. And they don't add anything. Matter of fact, they either just, they're just kind of uncomfortable. And I'm not a prude, but it's just like, why are we doing this? Like, can't we actually have these characters, like, talk to one another so I can get a sense of their relationship, like, better? Instead of just having a gratuitous, I don't need to see, I, this show has a lot of, like, uncircumcised dick. A lot of uncircumcised dick flaccid, erect, and it's not well animated too. It's it kind of just looks like a banana. It just looks like a tan banana, chat. Just the just just a like a sock that's been painted, you know, a uh, uh, beige. That's what it looks like, right? Uh there are just so many scenes where and it's like the first 5 minutes uh where Leaf is talking about ah how I met Sigrid, she was great and she, she uh, saves him on the battlefield against whatever enemy. And apparently she was so badass, she was so cool that a Valkyrie came down to, like, greet her. And I'm not joking, chat. The Valkyrie looks at her and then takes, the Valkyrie takes her two fingers and starts sticking them in her own mouth. Like, the Valkyrie's like, like that. And then she takes those two fingers and sticks it in, in Sigrid's mouth and just starts, like, oh, like that. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. And then she brings Sigrid closer, and then they, they make out. And it's just like, why? What did, what did that add? <laughs> what, what's the point? And Leaf is just, we just cut to Leaf in the background going, yeah. <laughs> what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> and, and then we get another one uh, uh, in the second episode. <laughs> second episode, chat. Um, the comic relief character. Played by, uh, oh God, I forget, I forget his name. It's actually a good actor. Raul Coley, he's in this show. He got tricked into this show. He's the comic relief character. And he is fucking this woman from behind. They're, they're butt ass naked. He's fucking her up the ass. And he's talking about his mother. Now, <laughs> I'm just gonna, I think that's a little awkward to like, you know, I, again, you know, whatever floats your boat, but. I don't think too many people are who are like fucking are then going on about like their mother and their and he's talking he's giving his origin story. He's literally talking about his origin story and his mother Bannon while he's fucking this woman. And and just to top it all off, the 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 cherry on top of this cream pie, if you will, he's getting fucked from behind <laughs> at the same time from another guy who's like, Oh, I'm sorry about your mom. I'm like, what do we do? What are we doing? What is, what's the point of all this? And it's like, I, is this supposed to be funny? Is it supposed to be sexy? It's just, it's just weird. It's unnecessary, guys. It's just really unnecessary. It's, it's Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder, and this is, this is the other thing. He's such a, he's a man of contradictions where he has this kind of like gross sex stuff and a lot of his stuff that like adds to nothing, just kind of makes you uncomfortable or it's just unintentional. It, it's, it's one or the other. It's never hot and sexy. It's never like, oh yeah, I can vibe with this. It's like, this is cool. It's no, it's either uncomfortable and gross or really unintentionally funny. And I think you can interpret any of these sex scenes that way. You know, whatever floats your boat. But then he also just brings in all that he can't help himself. Because he clearly is like a super religious guy, which is weird that he has like all this kind of pervy stuff in his movies. But he loves the Judeo-Christian imagery, the Jesus imagery in his in his films. Like you've seen it. It's, it's everywhere. It's always there, you know. Uh, and it's distracting. <laughs> it's so distracting. For this... The Judeo-Christian imagery and the Jesus imagery, it, it, he is skyrocketed to an 11, chat. Because, I'm going to spoil this because I don't care. I don't care. I just don't care. Because this show fucking sucks. Jesus is in the show. He's actually in the show. He shows up like Odin the All-Father meets Jesus. 
<laughs> and I was like, who is this guy? And like, Jesus comes to, of course, in that T-pose chat, nailed to the cross and everything, fucking comes down. Owen's like, ah, Owen's like, he gets crucified on the, on the world tree and stuff. And then it, and then after that moment where he's like, where Owen's like, who's this guy? We then, we then transport to the future. We're in the future now. Okay, it's the same show, by the way. It's the same dark Norse mythology revenge story. We go to the future. We're in Manhattan. We're in Manhattan. We're where Odin is looking at it. He's he's looking at a church in the middle of Manhattan. He looks up and he's like, oh. And then Jesus shows up. <laughs> and then Jesus shows up and walks over to Odin's like, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> And puts his hand on him. Owen's like, ah! And I guess I, I, that thought, like, oh, here we go. Like, Jesus is going to fucking fight Odin. Nah, he just touches him. And, and Odin's like, oh, I'm going to be forgotten because I'm going to be replaced by Jesus. It's like, what does that have to do with the fucking story about Sigrid and her, and her family of giants being wiped out? And th- what is, well, who cares? And it's just, again, because he's like, I, because he's very religious. And he loves to include Judeo-Christian imagery and Jesus imagery, whether it is relevant to the story or not. He's like, and he even said himself, there's, I actually read an interview today because everyone was making fun of it online. Um, he was asked, like, why do you keep including this? And, he, cause he, and guess what he says? Because it looks cool. Because it looks cool. Of course. And it's not because it has any relevant story purpose or it makes sense for the characters. It, it's because it looks cool. Is this show <laughs> as bad as Rebel Moon, or some of Zack Snyder's like other like worst movies, right? No, I, I don't think it's it's it quite reaches that like a Rebel Moon or a Sucker Punch, but it certainly is exasperating as them, and it's very long. Um, it still suffers from all the things that plague those movies. It's vapid. It's poorly written. It's it's very schlocky. It, it's it's it, it's poorly written schlock that is outclassed by so many other animated shows that have come out this year or, or, or the last few years. I mean, shows like X-Men 97, Blue Eye Samurai, Arcane, shows that are very adult, you know, um, and explore uh, adult themes and concepts and, and presents them in a mature way that doesn't come across as gratuitous or unintentionally funny. Like, all those shows succeed across the board because they're written by people that know what they do what they're doing (laughs) you know they 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 do it just infinitely better than 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 Zack Snyder's Twilight of the Gods and you know I get and the last thing I'll say about this I'm honestly sad about one thing and it's that other creators other filmmakers animators people that also like make adult animated fair especially there there's just so many people that that want to do a show like this uh, or something like it, that are infinitely more deserving than, than, than Zack Snyder. Like, Zack Snyder, I don't understand why he, he keeps getting chances time and time again. It's so weird. And, and so, more often than not, like, these studios that, that, that back him, they just never really lose. They just lose so much, so much money, and they have to deal with the controversy and the infamy and the obnoxious fan base. It's just like, fuck. Like, I, like Rebel Moon, I, I don't know how many, I think, what, is it $200 million? Like, you know how many movies they could have made for that? $200 million, like, get it to, like, a, like smaller films, you know? Give it to an up-and-coming filmmaker or someone who showed, like, a lot of promise with this one part. It's like, oh, shit, let's give them, let's have them tell us. So, like, I would, that would be, you could have had so many other great films, 10 or 20 movies <laughs> worth. But no, we get crap like Rebel Moon. Or we could have gotten, like, Netflix has produced some really great adult animated shows. I just named some of them in, in, in my re- Blue Eye Samurai, you know, um, um, uh, Arcane or Castlevania. They're all infinitely better than this. And I was thinking, like, you could have had another project that could have been like this, but no, you have to give Zack Snyder money. And he's completely undeserving of it. Um... Yeah, it's it's just it's just more of the same with him. It's more of the same, and you know his his sycophantic fan base. They'll eat it up. They'll love it because they have to, because for whatever reason they have they are suckled to his teats, and they they just love what he he what he comes out of him. I I I I don't understand. I don't get it. But um, but yeah, no, this show is thoroughly disappointing. It's a waste of of an idea of a premise, of of Norse mythology. And uh, of the the work of probably talented animators, but uh, but yeah, it's just it. What it is, chat. It's more Zack Snyder slop. That's what it is.
But what about you guys? What do you think of Twilight of the Gods? A lot of people don't even know this was even out. <laughs> <laughs> did you like it? Were you mixed on it? Did you downright hate it like I did? Let me know. Five minutes later. Naya Brownie, hot hands. Good to see you, Naya. How you doing? How's the schools going? Good to see you. Let's see what you guys are saying here. I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. Hey, Zeus. <laughs> oh, lordy. Let's see you got here. That sounds hilarious. Doubt if that was their action. They want. I know he made a pee joke with Amy Adams and a Man of Steel and a pervy pee joke. Yeah, he just. He just. Yeah, I just. He does these pervy. He does pervy stuff, and I'm like, why? And it's so weird because then he has like he's clearly a very religious person and he loves that imagery. I want to know what his childhood was like. <laughs> you just get railed in the show. Oh, I would have loved that. <laughs> I'm asking because Zach can't help himself. Jesus does not get railed. He gets fucked up a little bit. He's you know he's got the stigmata going. He's he's nailed that cross. He's like he turns to him and he's like help me. <laughs> he's like I don't know who the fuck you are. And I don't want to help you. I want to help myself. <laughs> I know what a show for Jesus to appear is. It's like why is he here? <laughs> why is he here? <laughs> oh, low brilliant. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now when I meant yeah, I know <laughs> the Zacchaeus of the Christ. He should just, instead of Mel Gibson directing Passion of the Christ 2, they should just give it to Zack Snyder. It's not like a South Park sketch. It kind of is. So much of it feels that way. So you're just like, hey, my revenge is known to shut up. This is involved. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Edgy, you're not wrong. It's like, all right, we're going to pay attention to Odin now. <laughs> it was like, again, Odin dealing with Odin shit. He's he usually is like, okay, how, is, how can we make this about me? Right? And uh, yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> but it's just like, this isn't relevant to like the overall show. Oh, God. Let's see here. It's cult-like fan base, right? Man, imagine a good thing getting... I know, I know. And this is like all the money that's wasted on this. It's like, fuck. Ah, oh, it's disappointing. It's actually, my vision! Oh, he's coming all over the place. Definitely. Uh, the only animated show I'm looking forward to from Netflix is Devil May Cry. Uh, you should watch Arcane, Jarvi. Arcane's really good. That's coming out, season two. Coming out for that, I usually enjoy Zack Snyder movies. I have some problems with them, but overall I enjoy them. But I couldn't or didn't want to finish Rebel Moon, so I'll skip this. Yeah, I, I just, it's just, it's, it's Rebel Moon again. It's Rebel Moon again. It's just Norse. So certified fresh then. That's right. <laughs> so I wouldn't seen that put out promotion and understand what was going on. Now, there's a lot of that. There's, there is a lot of scenes where, again, I, I, um, there's a, a scene in the show where Leaf asks, why are we doing this? Be because it must be done. <laughs> That's what one of the characters says. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, all right. Why we got to get these cursed weapons? Because it is, it is what must be done to defeat gods. And I'm like, mm, okay. If you say so. <laughs> oh, hi, Naya. How you doing? Only I have seen one episode. Honestly thought it was uh, okay. That might be the best episode. <laughs> but I can expect it to go down now. Animation's pretty, uh, pretty. I didn't like the animation. I thought it was very choppy. I'm going to skip both of these shows. Shall we buy you a, uh, a DARPA of Zexeros? Nah. Nah, I don't need it. <laughs> explain butt stuff again. I will. Zack Snyder will explain it. There was a lot of butt stuff in the show. Zack Snyder, my version of Jesus would get raped. I know. That's right. That, like, you got to remember, this is the same guy that said, my version of Batman could get raped in prison. He thinks that's cool. He thinks that's a good thing. And this is like, fucking Christ. How did this guy get be well, Why was he in charge of the so many of these decent, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, how did this happen? How did this happen? You know? Oh. Uh, do people have sex with the hardest like Rebel Moon Snyder Cut? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, they kind of do that. Yeah, yeah, people just fucking, they're, they're, there's a lot of dialogue that, and it's so just cringy where everyone is like super free of talking about like sex and stuff in the open, fucking each other and all. It's just like, it's, that's kind of what it is. That's what a lot of the dialogue amounts to. And exposition. It's either crass sexness, like sex jokes, or just exposition. And I, vengeance, and I need vengeance. Except when Odin wants to talk to Jesus. <laughs> At least uh, their Star Wars patch two will be slightly less anti-Semitic. True. Maybe, I don't know. Really didn't think he was that involved with this. I thought it has uh, his name. I, it's, it, it, th you know what's interesting about this show? What's really fascinating about it? Is that for the longest time they weren't saying who was the showrunner and who was the who are the main writers on the series? It's it's the same it's the same guys that he always works with. Um, but I thought that was very interesting that that for the longest time, like they, they like they said like listed who was the uh, like okay who are the the people that made this? And they always listed the composer. I think Hans Zimmer and the music is fucking just whatever. I think it's Hans Zimmer that does the music. Let me look. They changed it now. They've updated it now because the created by was like not listed. But it's it's the same people. It's the same people that always like you know works with um, like Zack Snyder. 
Um, it's just terrible. Yeah, but yeah, Hans Zimmer. Like for whatever reason, we go on the Wikipedia page; it's up there now. But when they said created by like Zack Snyder, J. Olivia, Eric Carrara, they weren't listed. It was like composer for the music. I was like, this is weird. You know, it didn't have like any of the producers on it or anything. It was very bizarre. I didn't like reveal that until like later on. I didn't get it. Oh Christ! Speak English. I'm trying. Yeah, it's got twelve year old boy written all over. It, definitely. It's what a 12-year-old boy thinks is badass. Don't make cry is the only other Netflix uh, show I'm looking forward to coming out this year. Really? You're not? You, you, uh, I've yet to... Oh, man. You got a fucking arcane. It's great. Yeah, Snyder's Musk is stink. is all over this. It's all over this. Be thankful Snyder got his hands on... No, never got his hands on... Oh, my God. I can't imagine. Holy shit. So Zack Snyder needs a rabbi and a mole to take care of those. Pe- I know. A lot of uncircumcised dick in this. They all, and they all look weird. All the penises. There's a lot of penis in this show. But the penises don't look good. They does. I mean, you know, they just, they just look fucking. It just looks like a sock that's been painted beige. <laughs> that's what it looks like. I'm like, no. Dream you over. I missed the whole thing. Now you can check out the VOD. I'll also be uploading um, edited reactions. Uh, or excuse me, edited reviews for this. But uh, but yeah, no, this this the show's it's trash. It's trash.